over 840 million Muslims in the world. About two million are American. Much of what we hear about Islam involves events in Iran, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, and other parts of the Islamic world. But there is much more to Islam than the political and economic events presented in the media. Islam has a distinguished history stretching back over 1400 years. The story of Islam begins with Muhammad, who was born around the year 570. From an early age, Muhammad showed an interest in spiritual matters. He spent long hours alone in meditation on Mount Hira near Mecca. At 25, he married a wealthy widow and began to raise a family. According to Muslim tradition, at age 40, during one of his silent vigils in the mountains, the angel Gabriel appeared before Muhammad, commanding him to recite in the name of God. Thus began a long series of revelations which are now embodied in the Muslim scripture known as the Quran. In place of the numerous gods recognized by many Arabs of that time, Muhammad declared that there was but one supreme God. The Arabic word for God is Allah. Muhammad said that the basis of his teaching was the religion of Abraham. According to the Quran, Muslims are descendants of Abraham's son Ishmael while Jews are descendants of Abraham's other son, Isaac. But Muhammad believed the Jews had strayed from the religion of Abraham and that Christians had distorted the teachings of Jesus. Muhammad believed he had been called to lead all men back to the truth of the one eternal religion, which he called Islam, or submission to the will of God. A Muslim then is one who submits to the will of God. The word Islam has both a literal and religious meaning. The literal meaning, it means peace. And the religious meaning, it means submission to the will of God. A total submission to Allah, the God, the only one. Muhammad, as a prophet, worked at spreading this message in Mecca for 10 years. As opposition to his teachings developed, Muhammad and his followers were forced to flee Mecca for Medina, which came to be known as the city of the prophet. The move to Medina in 622 AD marks the beginning of the Muslim calendar, much as the birth of Christ does for Christians. In Medina, Muhammad gained a wider following, and it was there that Muhammad revealed God's law in greater detail. Islam emphasizes only five obligations, known as the five pillars of Islam. The first is the Shahada, or profession of faith, which should be repeated several times a day. There is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet. The second pillar of Islam is prayer. A lot of people ask, why do I have to pray? And what is the function of prayer? We Muslims, or Islam says, that beside the spiritual function of prayers, it has psychological, it has social, it has physical functions. We stand in one line to pray from the janitor to the president or from the janitor to the king. Five times a day, the call to prayer rings out from the minarets of mosques throughout the Muslim world, calling the faithful to turn toward Mecca to pray. Prior to prayer, the worshiper performs a ritual washing. The prayer begins with a bow from the waist and continues with a series of prostrations in which the forehead touches the ground while verses from the Quran are repeated. The third pillar is zakat, a tax on the community for the needs of the poor. The fourth pillar is the fast during the month of Ramadan. Every adult Muslim in good health is required to go without food and drink from dawn to dusk during Ramadan, the month in which the Quran was revealed. The pilgrimage to Mecca, or Hajj, is the fifth pillar of Islam. Every Muslim with enough money to make the trip is expected to go to Mecca once. 
For many people from distant lands, this pilgrimage may be the greatest event of their lives. The full ceremony of the Hajj lasts several days. In Mecca, one of the rituals involves circling the Kaaba, the most sacred site in Islam. If possible, the pilgrims kiss the black stone meteorite embedded in the corner of the Kaaba. It is a journey an individual has to take from wherever he lives all around the world to one place which is called Mecca. This place, which is the city and the house of God, which was built by Prophet Ibrahim. May Allah blessing be on him. After Muhammad had established his leadership in Medina, he persuaded the Meccans to surrender without a fight in 630. Muhammad united most of the Arab world under his political rule and under the religion of Islam. In Islam, there is no clear separation between church and state. Islamic law comes directly from the Quran and from documents describing what Muhammad said and did in his life. Therefore, government and religion overlap in Islamic nations. The Quran and the Hadith remain the primary source of law for the Arab world. The sayings of the Prophet of Islam are called Hadith which in Arabic simply means saying, but when used in his case, it means the traditions, the actual words of the prophet, which have been handed down. Now they go according to subject, that is sayings or hadith pertaining, let's say, to fasting, to prayer, to caring for the sick, to care of the family, uh, to one's duty to one's community, to one's duty towards nature, towards animals, towards trees, and so forth, and so on, one could go on and on. And therefore, they are very easy to use by even people who are not great scholars of religion. And the Hadith collection goes all the way from very practical advice, dealing with practical life, to the most exalted uh, and spiritual attitudes which really concern the relationship between man and God inwardly. After Muhammad's death, Islam virtually exploded on the world in one of the most rapid and amazing conquests the world has ever known. This remarkable conquest, which was very short from the point of view of historical time, it took only a century for Islam to reach all the way from the center of Asia to the heart of France, marked the first stage in the spread of Islam. The second stage in the spread of Islam came with the conversion of the Turks mostly through Persian and also Arab sources. The third stage in the spread of Islam was the gradual uh, spread through the example of Sufis, that is Muslim saints and mystics, into India. During this time also, Islam began to spread in Southeast Asia into what is today Indonesia, Malaysia, and there also mostly through Sufi saints and mystics and also merchants. Finally, the fourth phase of the spread of Islam really begins during the last century. And that is the spread of Islam into the heartland of Africa and the further consolidation of Islam in certain of the outlying islands in the southern Pacific. In general, Arab rule was more tolerant than the tyrannies they overthrew. In many places, they were welcomed as liberators. Islam saw both Jews and Christians as people of the book misguided perhaps, but worshippers of the same God. Muhammad's successors were called Caliph, which means successor to the Prophet. In about 656 AD, a dispute over who was to become fourth Caliph led to a division in Islam that continues to this day. The Sunnis, or Orthodox Muslims, favored the election of the Caliph from among the Muslim community. The Shiites said the Caliph should be a member of the family of the Prophet. They wanted Muhammad's cousin and son-in-law Ali as Caliph. When Ali was assassinated, their hopes turned to Ali's son. But in 680, Ali's son Hussein fell in battle and became a martyr to the Shiites. They mourn his death each year in the Ashura festival. But while the Shiites seek to expand their influence on the Islamic world, they are as yet only a vocal minority of the Muslim population. Over 86% of Muslims are Sunnis who reject Shiite doctrines.
both Sunnis and Shiites may belong to another group known as the Sufis. The Sufis follow a mystical path within Islam. Perhaps the most famous of the Sufis are the whirling dervishes of Turkey. Between 640 and 700, Islam continued its expansion as Arab armies rode across Asia and North Africa. In 711, they conquered Spain. And between the years 750 and 1200, Islam enjoyed its golden age. Conquest gave way to culture. Cities like Baghdad, Alexandria, and Cordoba became centers of commerce. Arts and education flourished. Muslim mathematicians introduced the Arabic numerals we use today. They invented algebra. Libraries, hospitals, mosques, and palaces became the landmarks of Islamic culture. But slowly, the Golden Age withered and the Arab Empire began to crack. Tyrannical leaders in Baghdad found it difficult to control territories hundreds of miles away. Christian Europe sensed turmoil in the Islamic world. And over a period of 500 years, a series of crusades were launched in a failed effort to reclaim the Holy Land. The European Crusades were still in progress when a new and far more dangerous threat to Islam thundered down from the plains of Central Asia. In 1258, Hulagu Khan, the grandson of Genghis Khan, led his Mongol hordes into the Middle East. The Mongols captured Baghdad, the jewel of Islam, and murdered most of its 500,000 inhabitants. In Spain, Islamic reversals continued. And in 1492, seven and a half centuries after their arrival in Spain, the last Muslim king surrendered to the Catholic monarchs Ferdinand and Isabella. Out of the ruins left by the Mongols in the Middle East rose a Turkish leader named Othman, who began the process of rebuilding. By 1683, all of the Islamic lands from Algeria to southern Russia and through much of Eastern Europe were united under the Ottoman Empire. And by the mid-17th century, the Ottoman Empire was in decline. Meanwhile, European power was growing rapidly. Scientific and industrial advances gave the European nations military superiority over the Muslim world. And between 1798 and 1919, the world of Islam was carved up into colonial estates by France, Russia, Great Britain, and Italy. By the 1920s, Arab rule was limited to the vast central deserts of Arabia, where Islam had its beginnings. As a result of World War II, most Arab states obtained independence. But it wasn't until 1962, when the French pulled out of Algeria, that the colonial presence finally came to an end. For the Arabs, however, the Jewish state of Israel, founded after World War II, represents the continued European colonization of the Arab world. Like Jews and Christians, Muslims consider Jerusalem their holy city. Two of their most sacred shrines are found there the Dome of the Rock, and the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Several wars fought since Israel's founding in 1948, and occupation of more and more Arab land by Israel have made the situation seem even worse. In the United States, immigration from Muslim countries has brought Islam to American cities and towns, where mosques have appeared in increasing numbers. Today, the world of Islam is caught in the tension between those who want to progress along Western lines and fundamentalists who feel that, if necessary, revolutions must re-establish strict Muslim traditions. But while the ancient desert culture of nomadic tribes still survives, just over the horizon, vast petrochemical complexes, schools, hospitals, and universities open new avenues of progress for Islam. And still, from the minarets, comes the ancient call that millions answer with their prayers. <laughs>